Hey everybody, my name is Flynn, and I go by the name Flynn Shifo on the North American uh, Kings Raid Surfer, and I'm going to be starting a small uh, character build video series uh, with a different character focus on every video. And today's particular character focus involves uh, my favorite hero, Castle. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, his PvE, his PvP, and performance in both areas, and uh, all the different belts he can approach. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and kind of get started. Most people are under the impression that Castle is a PvP hero. Um, that may have been the, kind of the case in the past, but that's definitely changed um, as of you know recent patches, especially with the recent buffs that he's gotten. Eh, they're not so recent anymore. It's been a few months now, but he can perform generally well in both areas. And uh, in my personal opinion, he is tier A both in PvP and in PvE. Um, what you see before you right now is currently a PvP set I did myself, and this is what I currently rely on uh, to kick some butt in Arena. Uh, and obviously I also take him into League of Honor, so if you guys have faced me before in League of Honor, um, also know uh, how this one kind of feels. Um, Castle in general uh, is considered a bruiser hero. You can use him in walls and you can use him uh, in other comps as well. Uh, he does perform generally well. Uh, the thing about Castle, though, is he's really, really selfish. He's not going to provide much amp, and he's not going to provide much support to other heroes. However, he is a diver, he is a uh, CC immune hero, and he is a damage dealer. Um, and with kind of that said, I'd like to show you guys some of the stuff he can do in PvP.
Now that you kind of saw some of his uh, PvP performance, let's talk about actual specifics of the build. There's a lot of different ways you can actually approach Castle. He himself uh, provides a lot of uh, passive dodge that come, you know, from skills, from team perks, and literally his uh, skill three, which is Proxy the God. Um, so with all that considered, uh, dodge is always a safe bet to go. However, when you want to reach upper areas of PvP, I assure you that dodge does not work as you might think it does a lot of people run accuracy a lot of people run bracelets which makes it very hard to dodge so let's take a look about maybe tankiness one way to build a bruiser castle is to stack hp and a line of toughness of each type physical and magical what you can do is you can supplement that toughness with the T perk Tactical Foresight, which reduces uh, damage by an additional 10%, which is your toughness stat, as well as increasing his dodge by 200 uh, for each of those stats. Remember that you'll get an additional uh, 250 dodge from Proxy of God um, that will help you kind of already soft cap uh, dodge between uh, Tactical Foresight, that skill right there, as well as his T5 Light. Um, We'll talk about if you should take his T5 light in just a second. It depends if you decided to uh, TP castle or not. Now, let's talk about what kind of T perks you should take on castle. This is a very touchy subject because now that they've released TP uh, that allow you to add an additional up to 15 TP per hero, uh, there's a lot of things uh, that you can do and a lot of different builds that you can take. In specific, my personal opinion is you should always take the T1 attack and T1 uh, HP. The reason for this is Castle thrives on attack. If you are careful enough to read Aya, you will realize that Aya procs directly based off your attack stat. Each attack has a 35% chance of dealing 400% of attack as physical damage. Um, so with that considered, what you want to do is you always want to take your T1 attack perk so that you get that bonus DPS. Your second T1 perk should be the HP up perk. Uh, in PvP, HP itself is increased. This only helps survivability and it makes your character ever slightly tankier. For T2 perks, let's talk about making sure that you always take tactical foresight. Um, warriors no longer have base toughness, so this will make your character um, a lot tankier, believe it or not, and you always want to try to uh, add survivability to your hero. Not only that, but Tactical Foresight also increases dodge, which Castle thrives on. If you can afford the extra 15 points, you can place it in Offensive Guard. Um, your Half your physical defense will become uh, attack, as well as you get an additional 15% to your physical toughness. If you're struggling to meet the crit cap, Opportune Strike is the way to go. You get your extra 150 uh, crit, and you also get your 30% crit damage. You always, always, always want to take your Castle T5 Dark. This helps proc Aya, gives him an extra attack, and all in general, helps Aya proc. Your DPS will significantly increase with Castle's T5 Dark. Now, some of the uh, perks that you can consider taking, which I don't normally recommend, but if you are struggling to meet mana caps, uh, you can always take Proxy of God Light. This will reduce Proxy uh, by one mana and helps him get into Proxy faster, you know, thus making him CC immune. However, if you are not struggling with mana, T5 Light is always a safe bet. You obviously get your 15% bonus to attack, defense, HP, and of course you get the extra 100 physical dodge. Um, another perk you may consider is always uh, Valiant Dash Dark, which is a 25% physical amp for himself and everybody on the team. Um, with that kind of said, we're done with T perks. Now let's talk about the bruising side of things. You want your castle to be able to hit, and you want him to be able to hit hard. Now, always keep in mind that, um, as with any PvP DPS, you always need a little bit of investment in them. Uh, castle himself begins to shine at 3 stars, but at 5, and you have to get him to 5, that's when he'll truly take off. Aya does a lot of DPS, and Aya can also crit, which is the majority of his damage. So, you always want to be able to have around 700 crit if you take the crit opportune strike T perk, and of course, you take the crit perk on your healer, you'll always have at least that straight 1000. On 
top of that, you could always consider adding in a little bit of crit damage. Now, crit damage is going to be uh, a little difficult to squeeze in there unless you have all his UTs. But if you can squeeze crit damage in, do so, because once again, Aya is affected by the crit damage modifier. If you guys have a lot of tanky characters on your servers, you always want to consider penetration. Uh, penetration uh, will just help him uh, tear through walls, help him tear through any tanky character, and the giant infestation of Dimias and Lomans. Um, you'll be able to easily tear through them if you put in a bit of penetration uh, onto Castle. If you struggle with dodge, always add in an extra line to a line and a half of accuracy, and that problem just simply disappears. Always have one line of lifesteal to make sure that uh, just in case your healer bites the dust, Castle has a way of sustaining himself. And obviously one of the coolest things that a lot of people overlook is attack speed. Always make sure you are somewhere around soft cap. Remember, Castle gets an extra 250 attack speed while in proxy. If you have a 5 star UT3, that's an extra 500 attack speed. Uh, but keep in mind that that's not always necessary, and just having him close to soft cap is enough because he does, once again, get that 250 from S3, and if you run the healer T perk, he gets that as well. Finally, let's discuss UTs. Castle has two amazing UTs, one pretty average UT, and one, I'll be honest, pretty crappy UT. His UT2 is my personal favorite for PvP. Um, at 5 stars, it increases damage by 50% and reduces cooldown by 10 uh, whenever it gets a crit hit. And Valiant Dash hits 3 times. So if you hit uh, at least more than one hero with Valiant Dash, you're pretty much close to just having the whole cooldown reset itself. If you do not have a high star a UT2, or um, if you'd like to use UT1, it is perfectly fine as well. If you play a sustain match, uh, you can build up stacks on Crown of Light. I personally play my comp a little more bursty than I do uh, sustaining, so I usually use UT2. However, UT1 is a perfectly solid choice. Um, if you're going for the tank and sustain option, you can always use UT3. Uh, yeah, of course, you get the additional 250 dodge, and you get the 250 additional attack speed at 5 stars. And I highly never recommend... I just don't recommend this. However, you have Lewis tier. I'll be 100% honest, as a castle main, as a castle lover, I've always uh, loved everything there is about castle. This thing is absolute trash. Increases damage by 50%, the skill doesn't hit hard to begin with, and then attack speed of the enemy is reduced by 250 for 10 seconds. Again, I think this is absolute trash, especially considering um, this is strictly all melee range. With that said, all the other UTs are a lot better than Lewis tier. Alright, so now that the actual build uh, information itself are out the way, let's talk about artifacts. There are a number of artifacts that are half decent on Castle, and there are some that are just strictly what I consider S tier. There are only two artifacts in the S tier category. Uh, one of them is easily obtained, while the other one is not. If you have uh, access to the Crosshead Pumpkin, that is the first S tier artifact you can use. Why? Because one, you get your max HP increase, you get an additional damage modifier out of it, and the main reason, it does DPS, which means it has a chance to proc Aya. And considering Crosshead Pumpkin, uh, uh, you know, procs every one second, that helps you proc Aya more often. Remember, Aya has a half of a second cooldown. You want to proc Aya as much as you can. So, Crosshead Pumpkin is the first S tier artifact. Our second S tier artifact is a lot more uh, accessible, and that is the Solar Stone. The Solar Stone deals physical damage based on your attack stat. It will reduce uh, heal rate to anybody it hits, and on top of that, it also procs every second. Thus, Aya can proc even more often. So, those are the first two artifacts that are perfect on Castle, and I do say perfect. With all this PvP talk out the way, let's finally talk about PvE. Um, our boy recently got a buff uh, to his proxy of the god. And with that buff, he's able to do 100% additional damage in PvE, as long as it's not a hero. Which means, literally outside of the events that we normally have that include heroes, Castle can do 100% additional damage. What you want to try to do with Castle is you want to get a good balance between his attack stat and his crit damage stat. 
Um, the main reason is, is because, again, Aya procs directly based off your attack stat, but also has the crit damage modifier. My personal uh, opinion is, for every one line of attack you place on Castle, place two crit damage lines. Don't forget to uh, make sure that you at least have um, two lines of attack speed so that when he enters proxy and he gets your attack speed buff from your healer, he's at soft cap. With that said, let's give him a test run in PvE. So before wrapping up this hero building guide, I just wanted to quickly share what kind of perks you should take a look at when running in PvE mode. Um, the main perk that you should always be taking is obviously going to be your proxy of God Dark. You always want this because obviously that carries the 100% additional damage for non-hero enemies. When you are running into a uh, Dragon Raid, you always want to take Warlike along because you know that is a 70% attack increase when at least the 10 mini dragons come out. And then if you are running single target, you always want to take instead Judgment Blade Dark, and that's when you swap over to UT1. I hope you guys found this guide enjoyable, and I hope you guys found it helpful. And if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, my name is Flynn Shifo. I am on the North American Kings Raid server, and I hope you enjoyed this guide.